Men have died. Nations have split themselves asunder on the terrible rock of slavery. Yet it still exists today. Word had reached the United Nations Council that the age-old bartering in human lives was flourishing behind the great wastes of the Arabian desert. Slaves were being stolen from along the coast and sold to the Turag chieftains like cattle in the market. These coastal peoples have their own very definite facial characteristics and close-up photographs of them taken on the spot would be identification and proof enough of their slavery. Westerners are rarely seen in that territory. When they are, they're, they're suspect. All secrets are closely guarded from interfering officialdom. As a deadbeat, though, a uh, desert rat peacetime version, I hope to get by. Every government has its secret service branch. America, its CIA, France, Desiem Bureau, England, MI5. NATO also has its own. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me. Or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. The cities of that remote land are not touched by modern civilization. They are a feudal society, still living in the Middle Ages. The Mukta of the holy city of Medai was one of the Turek chieftains, reputed to be the master of many slaves. Palace gates were solid, closed and well guarded. Somehow I'd have to get past those gates. Get off the way, get off. Ferranci, unbeliever! Ah, what is it, faithful one? Do you seek a hostelry? Yeah, I do. Come, follow me. Hey, hey. Is it a, is it a good hotel? It's the best one in the city. Well, how other hotels are there? Uh, none. Well, then it is the best. Yes. Yeah, it's all right. You can leave these here. We'll drive around, huh? Can your machine climb steps? No, I'm afraid not. Then you'd better leave it here. Oh, do you think it'll be safe here with all the people of London? Yeah, I will speak to my uncle. He's a guard the gate. Huh? Follow me. Hey, find out. Come on, Francie. You wait here, Francie. I will find the patrol. My name is Spooner. Yes, I'm an Englishman, my dear fellow. Please believe me, there's nothing in this town for you, except death. Oh, why me in particular? You're a Ferenci, an unbeliever. This is a holy city. Uh, you're a Ferenci too, aren't you? Oh, no, on the contrary, I am a true believer. Greatly respected for my virtue. I've even made the pilgrimage to Mecca. Some cup. Uh, well, thank you. you. Join me. A true believer does not take alcohol. I was counting on that. Oh, my luck hasn't been too good of late. But there are business opportunities, you know, even in places as remote as this. Buying, selling, trading. Uh, certain merchandise is very hard to come by nowadays. It's very rewarding, but also very illegal. And do you think I might be able to help you? Well, you could arrange a meeting with the Mukta. Mr. Uh, Drake. Mr. Drake, I must confess to two dislikes, women in general, and sodden individuals like yourself in particular. <coughs> in Medi, there is room for exactly one white man. I'm sure you will agree that I have prior claims. You'd like me to leave now? My blessings would go with you. And if I don't? You'll never leave this town. When I was a little boy, I was afraid of bogeymen. Good luck to you, sir. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you have a room for me? Yes, why don't you? All right. Take me to it. All my things have been taken from my room. Oh, dear. 
That's right. The lady says all her things have been taken. Yes, but why did he take them from my room? Because you haven't paid your bill, I should imagine. You imagine? You know darn well I haven't paid my bill. You promised to pay it until you could find me work. Work in this town, that's a laugh. It's not my fault if your song and dance routine are not appreciated by the locals or if they prefer some cruder form of entertainment. You forget you were out of work when I found you, Miss Nichols. Yeah. And I was 500 miles closer to civilization then. Well, you were 500 miles nearer to your home, shall we say. This is not a woman's country, Miss Nichols. You really need a protector. <laughs> and by good fortune, the Mukta has heard of your distressing circumstances. He thought he might be able to help you. He would like you to call on him at the palace. Is that the man with six wives? Well, that's the custom of the country. He wants to meet you. Oh, he does, does he? You despicable, fat old... Now, Miss Nichols, please, I'm only thinking of you. After all, you are in rather a desperate situation. <laughs> I was only unpacking it for you, Faranchi. Ah. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I unpack it myself, huh? Are you not afraid of the fat one? Why should I be? He has great magic. His powers are many. What could he do to me? He turned you into a camel. Oh. Well, then I could go for three days without drinking, huh? You should not jest, he's dangerous. Huh? Now, what's that? <laughs> he's my protector. Does he bite you? No, he's my friend. He used to bite me before we were so well acquainted. At first, they all thought I would die. Only Allah spared me. Uh-huh. Look. For me? Ah, now, here. You tell me. If I had some strong, willing slaves, why could I sell them? It is not good to speak with strangers of such things. Would I find a market with your mukta? When my cousin was taken, his father went to the big city and spoke with the Faranchi police. What happened? The Tuaregs, the brothers of the Blue Veil, they followed him and they beat him to death. Here, it's yours. Good luck, believer. Very well, unbeliever. May you see light. You're American. I must talk to you. I'm Claire Nichols. How I got here is a long story of broken promises. <laughs> Promoters' tales of fame and fortune in distant places, of jobs that didn't materialize, and then... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's an old story. Yeah. It's a very old story and a very true one. Just and I need help. You don't know how desperately I'd do anything to get out of this town, out of this country. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't do anything for you. Listen, I've been around animals like Spooner for a long time now. I know them by smell, by instinct. And you're not like them. And you can't hide what you really are behind this bottle. Oh, no. There's 
something more to you. This. You can't just turn your back. Hmm. I'm sorry. Can't help you. You're sorry. Uh, a minute. I'll do a trade. You trade what? Um, you have an invitation to visit the Mooks' palace, don't you? Yeah, and I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. You're going to take me with you, introduce me as an old friend. Huh? Well, why should I do that? <laughs> what do you want there? Do you want my protection, or don't you? If I take you, do you promise to take me back to civilization? I, uh, I promise uh, to do my best. All right. Let's go. They say he's very rich. Do they? Are you sure you aren't making a mistake in leaving? Oh, uh, tell your master that Miss uh, Nichols is uh, here to see him. Fine. Yeah, he is rich, very rich. Indeed, he owns a mine, a diamond mine. I, uh, I think you ought to know. All right, so I know. And uh, you're going to ask him to show it, do you? What for? Because I tell you to. I can't. I, I say. I'd very much like to see your diamond mine. <laughs> you see, it comes quite naturally. What's wrong? My jeep is straight. Ferengi. Ah, oh, we're in. It is kind of you, young lady, to give me your valuable time so freely. We're curious to see the inside of your palace. Who is this gentleman? Uh, it's, um, it's Mr. Drake. He's a friend of mine. Mr. Drake, it is an honor. Do you intend to stay in my city long? Perhaps. And perhaps not. May I offer you tea, young lady? Thank you. And you, sir. Oh, okay. I understand that you find yourself in certain difficulties. We shall not discuss the matter at the moment. Come back. Alone. Excuse me. Don't stand on ceremony. I promise I shall find some way to help you. But in the meantime, you must leave your present lodging. It is not a fit place for a lady of your breeding. You must allow me to take you out. I will show you the sights. Thank you. Um, they, they tell me you have a diamond mine. Is it really true? Who told you that? I just heard it in the town. I thought it was ever so romantic. Tell me, would it be possible? I mean, could I see it sometime? It would be possible, but you would not like it. It is deep beneath the ground, hot as a furnace. Not a place for a delicate young lady like yourself. Oh. You see, it is really the stones that interest you, not the mine. And the mine interests me. In what way? A business way. It must be a very expensive project. I can't see how that could concern you, Mr. Drake. The men wouldn't live very long in that mine of yours and those conditions. I was hoping that I might be able to supply you with labor at very reasonable rates. Uh, I'm speaking of coastal labor, of course, all strong men. Are you interested in my proposition? No, I am not. Well, that's a pity, my dear, if I had to be moving on. We'll do business elsewhere. Oh, by the way, I left my jeep outside your gates. It uh, isn't there anymore. That's right. I put it in a safe place. Like have it back. You shall have it when the time comes for you to leave. The penalty in my country for theft is to cut off the offending hand at the wrist. Well, if you should happen to change your mind, I can be back from the coast in two or three weeks. I uh, always travel alone. Hey, you take me. Oh, I think it'd be more comfortable for you to stay here, my dear. In any case, if you didn't agree to remain, the Mukta might have some difficulty in finding my jeep. But you promised. I think perhaps we shall be able to talk business after all, Mr. Drake. Uh, thank you. You did very well. <laughs> Better than I hoped. You didn't do so badly yourself. Worked like a charm. Oh, here comes my jeep. Something more in you, I said. Now, I really know what hides behind that bottle. A slave peddler. Mr. 
Mr. Drake. Evening. Evening, Mrs. Porter. I thought you were just a sudden, loudmouthed sponger. Uh, how well you know me. Not well enough, I'm afraid. I warned you, Mr. Drake, that I have prior claims to this city. It seems you didn't take me seriously. Oh, very seriously indeed, Mrs. Porter. <coughs> Don't run away. You may be hearing from me soon. Ah, what are you doing here? I've got a message for you, Farron Chief. Oh. my life, Faranchi. Now it belongs to you. I'm your servant. Uh, uh. The door. Now listen. I want to know just one thing. Where is the Mukta's mine? Must I tell you, Franchi? Oh, now you said your life belonged to me, remember? About five miles north of the Mulka oasis, in the Narawati. How long will it take to get there? You must not go, Franchi. It is a secret place. It would kill you. Shh. How long will it take to get there? About two hours in your machine. There's a barbed fence all around. Uh, how high? About the height of two men. When you touch it, Sparks fly out like so. Psst, psst. And then you're dead. Uh -huh. You know the Faranchi lady? Yes. Well, you take this and you give it to her after I'm gone. Huh? Now make sure that nobody sees you hand it to her. Here, hide it. Yes. You stay here. Yes. You will keep faith? Faranchi. Ah, good boy. I'm surprised to see me, Mr. Spooner. This time, you're lucky, Mr. Drake. See, I'm taking your advice, Mr. Spooner. I'm uh, leaving town. May Allah go with you. Uh, goodbye, uh, Mr.
Just in time. Mr. Drake, I... I don't know what to say. I thought you deserted me. Don't worry about it, Miss Nichols. Oh, here comes my flying camel. Oh! A nougat, please, Miss Nichols. Right. And, uh... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm obliged, my friend. Farewell, believer. Farewell, unbeliever. You will come back, no? Very soon. Good. I shall be waiting. Did you get what you wanted? Yes, plenty. The Mukta and his friend, Mr. Spooner, are going to find themselves in a hornet's nest. <laughs> <laughs> 